Well, hey there, and welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy. I am the owner and creator behind Kids Vintage Farmhouse here in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I am so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. This week, I've been working on some beautiful French country decor DIYs. I ordered a whole bunch of stuff from the IOD's summer collection that just came out recently, and today we're going to be playing with some of the molds. I can't wait till you see what these projects look like, so let's just go right into the first one. I found this wood sign at one of my recent thrift hauls, and I only paid 60 cents for it. Now, it's just a piece of wood, and it's nothing special, but this turns out to be my most favorite DIY of this whole video. I decided I wanted to paint my sign white, and I'm using the DIY paint in the color called beadboard. So if you've got something that is wood and you're going to go to a lighter color like white, it's best to take it out and give it a few coats of shellac, which I did, and I also sanded it down because it had these strange little marks all in it that looked like somebody was poking a fork in it or something to me. I don't know. But I sanded it down the best that I could. And then I wiped it off. And then I gave it two coats of this beadboard. Now here's a little trick if you don't know about this. With DIY paint, since it is clay-based, you can give a little squirt of water to help your paint go a little bit further. And I noticed that I did that in this step. And a lot of you might be questioning, why did she do that? Well, I don't have much of my beadboard left. So it's just a little way that you can make your paint last a little bit longer. I've always adored the stencil that's got the little B in the middle with the French writing. I think it's so beautiful. Now, they have these on Amazon, but I found mine really cheap on AliExpress. However, I don't know if I came out to the best in this situation because let me tell y'all what happened. As soon as I ordered from AliExpress, and this could be total coincidence, but I don't think so, somebody got the information from my check card and I had to go down to the bank and stop it because they were trying to put charges through on my account. Now, luckily, I got it stopped in time and there was no problem, but it seems very strange to me that it happened at the same time that I ordered this stencil. This is a Chinese-based company, AliExpress is, by the way, and I like the stencil. It turned out beautiful, but let me tell you what I did. Here's another little mishap. I used the color black velvet, and I normally am a pouncer when it comes to stenciling. I like to pounce it up and down, and I've never had a problem. But as I was stenciling this, it came to mind that another creator that I love to watch was talking about how she circles hers. And I thought, well, why not try it out? And let me tell you something. Like my mama used to say, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I should have just stayed with the pouncing because there were a couple little areas when I pulled my stencil up that I wasn't happy with, so I just had to go back over and correct it. It was really no big deal. I mean, it's just crafting. There's always going to be some little mishap, but we can fix it with paint. It's just, I know if I would have pounced it, it would have saved me all that time, and it would have came out perfect. If you'll notice, this little scrolly area on the right-hand side appeared to be a little bit thicker than the left-hand side. And then the word France, I just didn't like it at all. So to fix that, I just painted right back over it with the beadboard. And then the second time, I pounced it like I knew to do, and it came out perfect. Now, I have these little brushes that I absolutely love, and they're like little angled brushes. And I think they're called little detail brushes. I got them off of Amazon, and they're lifesavers. Because you know on the stencils how they don't connect the words together. And for a lot of people, it doesn't bother them, but it drives me crazy. I like it to look better. It just looks more natural to me when it is put together. So I just went through all these little words and put them back together and connected them like they're supposed to go. 
Then I thought that this was all I was going to do to this sign, so I flipped it over and I put one of my favorite little hangers right in the center. I get these from Amazon, by the way, and I love them because you just hammer them in and they're one, two, and done. But when I hung this up on the wall, it seemed so plain to me. So I'm going to use the mold called Dainty Flourishes. I love this because it's just like little scrolly patterns everywhere. And it's beautiful for like edging and that type thing. Anywhere you want to put that kind of design. I'm going to use the Amazing Casting Resin, which is amazing. It dries in like 10 minutes. And if you don't use this type, you will literally have to wait overnight, and nobody got time for that. So I get this off of Amazon. I think it's about 20 bucks for these two little bottles, but hey, it's so worth every dime of it. You have a bottle A and a bottle B, and all you do is fill up equal parts. I literally had one cup each of A and B. You just mix them in together, and you have to hurry because it starts setting up very fast. And you'll see what happened in just a minute. So, with these having little small areas, I was trying to be as careful as I could so I don't overfill. Because when you overfill your molds, it will cause like a little area to spill over the side. And it's no big deal. You can just pull it away. But sometimes in those little scrolly areas, it, they're kind of hard to pull away. So the way that I beat this when there are small little areas is I just kind of jiggle it around. And that way it gets the fluid everywhere it needs. Now look at this. I grabbed another mold because I wanted to use the rest of the resin and not waste it. By the time I had grabbed this mold... Look, it had already hardened up beyond the point of being able to use. Now that is some fast setting resin. That second mold that I pulled out, by the way, is called Primitive. All I did was grab a baby wipe and wipe up my area, and these were already dry and ready to pull out. Now I did get a small little piece of a sunflower, it appears to be, from the Primitive set. And on the box, it says that the amazing casting resin, resin will, like, cure or whatever in 10 minutes when it gets white like this. But I find that it's much faster than that. It's usually like a five-minute time. I'm not kidding. And these are so easy to do. All you got to do is literally just kind of move your, your little mold, and it basically kind of pops right out. You know, it's so easy to take out. And if I overfilled it in any spots, you'll see like little extra pieces on the side. And all I do is just pull those off with my fingers. I've used other molds before and other brands, but nothing can even come close to the IOD. They have that little micro rim on them that makes it very easy to like when you're using clay to like cut off where it needs to it's like a little micro lip is what they call it and it just makes it so easy and effortless to use and i just absolutely love the anything iod is high quality you're not going to get anything better and also i was going to let you guys know if you do want to try out any of these molds that you're seeing me play with today then you need to go to miss Lori at Milton's Daughter, and it's www.miltonsdaughter.com. If you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10, you get 10% off your first order with her, and she's amazing. You guys will love her. I'll leave all that information in the description box and the comments below so that she's easy to find, but you will never, ever go wrong with IOD, and can you just imagine all of the DIYs that we can make with this particular mold, like the wheels in my head are turning like crazy. I laid these out to see exactly where I wanted them at and look at this beautiful pattern that I was able to make. I'm so glad that I went back and started playing around with these molds because it just seemed so plain to me before and now it's gorgeous. So all I'm doing is taking my 
tight bond quick and thick, which is actually a wood glue, but it's probably, or I think it's the best one to use when you're doing the molds. And I am just putting a little bit on the back, rubbing it in with my finger, and putting it down where I had placed it before. As we're watching me pull these molds out, I just wanted to ask you guys a favor. If you would, please hit the thumbs up button. That's the like button because it really, really helps me out on YouTube. It helps to push my videos out to people who've never seen me before. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit that little red button and subscribe. We would love to have you as part of our family here. Now, if you really love and want to support my channel, there's three things that you can do to help me, which would be to hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed, turn your notification bells on, that's right beside the subscribe button, and comment, even if it's just a heart emoji, that tells them that you really love my channel. And I definitely appreciate every one of you. Now here, all I'm doing is taking my beadboard and I'm going over those molds that I just put down because they were stark white. And if you remember, the beadboard is an off-white color. So we want everything on this to be the exact same color of white. I used a brush that had a kind of pointed tip. That way it could get in all those nooks and crannies of the mold. And by the way, while it's fresh on my mind, in my last video, the farmhouse video, I told you guys that I was going to give away a couple of calendars. And if you're one of the ones that entered in the giveaway, then I will announce the winners. I think I have a total of four. I have to go back and make sure it's either four or five. So there will be four or five winners. And I will announce the winners on Monday's video. So don't miss it. Here, I'm just taking my black DIY wax, and I'm going to go all inside the little nooks and crannies of my beautiful little molds. And then I'm just going to take a napkin to wipe off the excess. And here I'm just finishing it off by going around the edges and highlighting it just a little bit with my black wax and rubbing it in with my finger. I hope you like this one. I think it's gorgeous. We are moving right into DIY number two. It is very simple and easy, and it's gorgeous. This is a little ceramic planter that I've had for a really long time. I don't even remember where I got it at, to tell you the truth. The little inner portion comes out that the plant goes in, and the outer portion there is gold, and I don't like gold, so I took it outside and I spray painted it with some Rust-Oleum in the color white. And I had made up some previous molds from the Juliet mold, which is gorgeous. It's a bunch of roses, and you will see me making the actual mold in just a little bit. But these two roses were left over, so I'm just taking my top bond wood glue and I'm going to put a little bit on the back 
and we're going to place these right on the front of our little garden planter. Then I'm just going to grab some of my blue masking tape here, and I'm just going to put it over these and lay them down so that they will dry this way. I left them there for a few hours and let them dry good enough to where they weren't going to move around. And I'm just taking some of my black wax from DIY, and I'm taking this little paintbrush, and I'm going all inside the little divots all over my little flowers. And then I'm just going to wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. And that's literally all I did to this one. I took a couple of my little hen and chicks from my little garden bed and stuck them in there. And I took this old drab planter to something so cute and beautiful. We're moving right into DIY number three, and this one is also an easy one. I got these two plaques at one of my last thrift hauls, and I think the flowers on them are gorgeous. I paid a dollar a piece for them, but I don't like that wood color, so I took it outside and I spray painted it with a couple coats of shellac, and we're going with our color beadboard once again. If you've noticed, I'm doing all black and white in this video because a lot of people like neutral decor. And I'm going to show you what a simple paint job can do for a project. It took these old drab plaques from the thrift store to something so beautiful and just very French country, and I'm here for it. So I just went all around with my color beadboard, being careful not to get it on the little picture in the middle, because I love the florals that's on these. So I ended up having to give it about two coats because that color underneath just kept wanting to peek through that beadboard. But you always make sure you do the shellac because if you don't, those old brown tannins from that plaque are going to come through on that pretty new white paint job and ruin all that hard work you just did. And you definitely don't want that. And while I am showing you myself painting these, I was just going to let you know a quick update on my health. So many people have been asking me, and thank you so much for asking and worrying about me. I only had the one infusion so far for my anemia, and she's sending me to a hematologist, but it's taking forever to get into these guys because they're also oncologists too. And I'm sure that the cancer patients have definite precedence over people that just need blood or infusions. So I'm still waiting on the hematologist so he can tell me how many more treatments I need. Now I go on vacation July 6th and I definitely want to be feeling human when I go on vacation. So I've been calling them to ask them, hey guys, you know, when is my appointment going to be? Because I'm really concerned that if I go to the beach feeling the way that I do right now, I'm not really going to want to do anything. Like, I'm struggling through every day right now. But thank you guys for your prayers and comments. I love every single one of y'all. Now, here I'm just taking some little hooks because I want to make these into little hangers. I don't just want to make them, you know, simple little plaques. I want to be able to hang them up and put stuff on them. But let's look at the difference that it made from taking it from that brown color to this white. I think it's gorgeous, and it really pops out now. And I don't know if you guys remember the video that I made a few weeks ago where I'm redoing my own bedroom. These little plaques are definitely going in my bedroom because I love them. I don't want to sell them. I want to use them for myself because this goes right along with the little scheme that I've got in my bedroom. Now I'm going to take my DIY Dark and Decrepit, and it is a brownish colored liquid patina. I absolutely love this. You can use it almost like a wax, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to brush a very light 
coat of it all around my little picture frames. And then I'm just going to use a baby wipe to kind of wipe off the excess and get it down in those grooves. That's just going to slightly antique these pictures and make them gorgeous. And that's all I did on this. It was so simple and easy, but it just made such a big statement for me because I love these plaques. I hope you like these. I think they sure are pretty. Now we're moving into our last DIY of the day, and this one was a doozy. You ever have one of those days where it seems like your DIY, you just can't get it to the way you want it? That's what was going on with this one. This is actually a little mirror, and I covered up the mirror so there wouldn't be like a glare so I could show you guys. This is what it looked like before. I had this in my booth, and it never did sell. I didn't have a big price on it, but apparently people didn't like the motif I had on it. So I took it outside and I sanded it down because those were pieces of rice paper on there and I wanted to make sure I got them off. Now this is where this whole video started. This was my first DIY actually, but I left it for the last because I wanted to show you guys that we make mistakes too. And sometimes, you know, no matter how hard you try, you're just not 100% proud of that piece. And this was that piece. I was really frustrated when I was doing this whole piece. I started off with the blue iris color by DIY Paint because remember, that's the color that I did in my bedroom a few weeks ago. And I wanted this mirror to go in my bedroom. I started off with this color and I thought, man, that color's kind of vibrant. I'm definitely going to have to use some white wax to kind of knock it down. And of course, I always have to show you guys how beautiful it is when you dry it down. Look how pretty this is, though. It's just such a pretty color, but I like to kind of mute it down because it is very bright. And this is where I started off with this mold, and it's called Juliet. I think it's beautiful. This is the roses that we used on that second DIY that I put on my little planter. And this is so, so pretty. So what I was going to do is just make the whole thing up. And I'm going to use clay for this. And I wanted to show you guys the way that I do my clay is I like to put it a little baby wipe in there. And it gives it moisture. And then after that, I put, make sure that I put it in like a Ziploc bag where there's no air getting to my clay. It's probably been maybe a month since I've used this clay and it's just as fresh as the day I opened it. There was even a little bit of moisture on the foil that the clay is stored in. So anyways, I take a little bit of the clay and I just kind of warm it up in my hands and I'm going to go over this whole entire mold and put the clay down in there. Now, remember I told you guys before that the ILD molds are amazing because they have a little micro rim and it helps you to put your mold down in there correctly. I realized when I started this that I had forgot my cornstarch. 
When you're using clay, it's best to put down a little bit of cornstarch, just kind of dust it in there and get off the excess because that's going to help your clay mold come out a little bit easier. Clay is very different than the resin, whereas the resin just kind of pops right out whenever it's dry, but the clay wants to hold on sometimes because it's clay. It's like Play-Doh almost. And so here, I just go all over the whole thing and using that micro rim, it's perfect every time. And then to store it, I take a fresh baby wipe and I stick it in a baggie with the clay. And then I stick that baggie in a bigger baggie and make sure that it's airtight. I don't take any chances with my clay. And by the way, I get my clay from Amazon, that DOS brand clay. It's what I'm used to working with, and it's a great price, so I just stick with it. It's in my Amazon store in case you guys want some of that. So look how easy this came out because I used the cornstarch. It made such a difference. I'm just kind of rolling my mold back, and look at this beautiful creation that it made. These are so pretty, and I can see right now I'm going to wear this one into the ground because I absolutely love these beautiful roses on this. So I get my little clay tools out, and the tools that I use are nothing special at all. Like, I think I literally got these from the Dollar Tree. They're just little plastic, like, knife type things that help me to cut where I need to cut at. And then I just use an X-Acto knife if I need it. Because if you'll notice, this mold is kind of all joined together, but I need to cut pieces off so I can get it around this mirror and make it look right. So I'm just going to lay my pieces down and kind of figure out exactly where I want them on here. Now, since they're fresh out of the mold, they are very pliable and you have to be careful because you can make them fall apart. And so I'm just taking my quick and thick wood glue, which is what I'm going to put these down with, and I'm getting it prepared as I lay all my pieces down and just kind of get a pattern for the way I want them before I glue them down. And now that I've got all of my pieces laid exactly like I want them, I just kind of gently flip them over and use my quick and thick. And at first I was using this little spatula to kind of wipe the glue around where I needed it, but it's so much easier for me just to use my finger and kind of rub it in where I need it to go. Now, if there were areas where there was like a little open spot, it's no problem. I can literally take a piece from the part that I've cut up and just kind of lay it on top, and it looks like it belongs there. That's the beautiful thing about the anything from IOD, from the transfers to the molds, is you don't have to have it exactly the way that it looks. You can take bits and pieces of it and move it around to your liking, and it always comes out looking like that's the way that it was supposed to be. I absolutely love this mold, and I'm so excited that I got this one from Miss Lori. And then I go back and just wipe off any of the excess glue that may have came out from the molds with just a little baby wipe. And then there were a few areas where it looked like there was a spot missing, so I just added a little leaf or a flower or even a small little rose. Now, since my creation here is already this blue iris color, I've got to paint my molds that same color because it just looks better and more cohesive when you do it all the same color. So I went through with the brush that I could get all up in them roses, and I just went over the whole thing with the blue iris. Then once I had it all painted, I went back with my dryer so that I could dry those roses a little bit. But since they're made out of clay, I don't want to give it too much heat because I was afraid that I might make some pieces crack. So I just dried it down to where it was probably 75% of the way dry. And I just want you to look at the color, how it changes as it dries. But keep in mind, it's not totally dry whenever I finished. Now this is probably where my project went wrong in my mind. I'm using the stamps, and these are part of the summer collection, and it's called Rural 
scenes. You guys know I cannot say that word rural. It always comes out to sound like I'm saying R-U-L-E, rural, because I say rural, rural scenes. Anyways, so I just wanted to show you how beautiful these stamps are, and I wanted to put some of them down on my little mirror here. I'm just cutting a piece of my thin mount out because I'm just going to be using small sections and I don't need that whole big area. And my next step is to take my sander because I've never used these stamps before and I just go vertical and then I go horizontal, just a couple little swipes to make sure that any extra material or anything that came from the factory is off of there so that your stamps will be nice and vibrant and perfect. And I just went through and picked out the small pieces that I would want on this mirror and I just kind of played with them and laid them out in a scene so I could see if they would look good where I wanted them before I committed. Then the first thing that I'm going to ink up on my thin mount is going to be this little house and then there's a little sheep and it's right here on the right hand side and like a little bush that I wanted to go beside my house. And so I'm just figuring out exactly how I want it, and then I'm inking up my stamp. Now the next thing that I want to put down is like a little tree or a bush, and I want it to go on the right-hand side of my little house and make it look like it's kind of behind the house. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to use a mask. And all of the IOD stamps come with a mask, and what a mask is is basically a little piece of plastic that's in the shape of each of the stamps and you lay it down over the top of that stamp so when you stamp something over it it's going to actually look like it's behind it in other words it's stopping that stamp that little bush that i'm putting there from going right on top of that house and making it look like it's behind the house and I'm going to do the exact same thing with my little sheep. I want him to be standing on a hill, but I have to cover part of him up so that he looks like he's standing on it right. And then I just go all over my little mirror here, and I put my stamps in the order that I have them. Now this stamp set has some of the prettiest stuff on there. If you guys are into that French I, you know I cannot even say this word, but it's T-O-I-L-E, tool or toile. I'm not even sure how you say it, but it's a certain look. If you're into that, that's exactly what these stamps are. They have different little like farm animals. There's the, the little bulls in there. The sheep is in there. There's even ducks that I put on my little mirror here that look like they're flying off in the distance. And there's like these beautiful little old homes on there, little cottages. There's also windmills. This stamp has probably 60, well, maybe not that many, between 40 and 60 stamps on these two sheets that you get. So here I'm taking Big Top. I'm going to seal in my piece because DIY paint is clay based and it does have to be sealed or it can be reactivated with water. So I just used a little bit of the big top and I went around the whole thing. I went around even the roses that I had put on there and then I'm just going to use my dryer to kind of dry all of it off. Once I got it dried, I grabbed my DIY white wax and it doesn't take much. And then I use my little waxing brush that I got from Miss Lori. She sells brushes and stuff, by the way, too. Anything that you need for your DIY project, she pretty much has in her store. I went all over these roses because, remember, I was trying to knock down that vibrant blue color. And the white wax does that perfectly. So I went all over with my little paper towel and just kind of wiped off the roses so that the white parts would be down in those crevices and they would pop. But for some reason, it just didn't sit right with me. I didn't like the whole scheme of it. I don't know if it was the fact that I put the stamps on here 
or if it was the color of blue that I used, or if it was just the fact that I really didn't like that white wax in those roses. Maybe it was a little bit of everything all together. But I told you guys at the first, this project just kind of went wiry. I really don't know where I went wrong, but I was not happy with this project at all. And it's like, no matter what I did, it just did not turn out right. So here's my thought process. After I did the white wax, I thought, okay, let's use some of that dark and decrepit because maybe we need a brown color in those roses. Maybe that's where I went wrong. So you see here, I went all over it with the dark and decrepit and I wiped off those high points. That way the darker color would be down in those roses and I still wasn't happy. So then I went in with my black wax <laughs> because I thought maybe the dark and decrepit just wasn't dark enough. Maybe I need to go darker, which is something that I don't usually do because, like I said, this color was very bright and vibrant. And at first I was trying to knock it down, but then I thought maybe it's the roses. I just don't know. So let me tell you what I did. I got so upset at myself. I went back over this, and here I'm using the color beadboard, and I thought, I'm just going to start fresh. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to waste this whole energy that I just put out on this project, and I'm going to start from fresh. So I went over it with the color beadboard, and I painted this whole thing this off-white color. Now, because I put that blue iris underneath, which was that, vi that very vibrant blue color, it took about three coats for me to cover it up. But I was bound and determined that I was going to make this mirror something I was proud of. And it just wasn't there yet. So I covered it up with the beadboard. I covered up my beautiful stamps and everything. I was like, am I crazy for doing this? Probably so, but I've got to see if I can make this project something that I am proud to show you. And like I said before, I like to show you guys the whole process so you know where my mind was going and the reasoning that I had for doing what I did. So once I got everything painted, I just simply dried it down and if I would have probably left it alone, I think I would have liked it better. I really liked it when it was just plain white like this. But you guys know me, and I couldn't leave it alone. So the first thing that I did was start off with my dark and decrepit again because I was thinking I just wanted to lightly antique this, and I would be happy with it. So I went back over the roses with the dark and decrepit, and just wiped off that excess with a simple napkin. Well, believe it or not, I still wasn't happy with the result. So then I pulled out the black wax again, and I thought, maybe I just need to go darker with these roses. I just can't put my finger on it. I think it's the mirror itself, because it's such a small size. I just could not get this project where I wanted it. So I went all around with my black wax and I just wiped off the excess with a napkin and in the spots where I felt like I gave it too much, I just went back over with a little bit of the white that was left on my brush. And when I sat back and looked at it, I still wasn't happy. So I got a baby wipe and I wiped off that black to the best of my ability. I thought maybe it's the color of brown that I'm using because that dark and decrepit is a very dark brown. So I just grabbed my Waverly Antique Wax and this wax is very, very watered down. It's probably 75% water and 25% of the actual product. I went all around my little roses and all around this whole mirror and then I just kind of wiped down the excess with the baby wipe because all I was looking for was for my mirror to have these beautiful roses on it and for it to kind of look a little vintage and antique but just lightly not too much 
So then I went back with the baby wipe and just wiped it down to the best of my ability. You've heard the definition of insanities doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Well, I guess you're just watching an insane country bumpkin over here. And finally, at that point, after going through all those different steps that you guys saw me go through, I was somewhat happy with it. I still wasn't 100% happy with it, but at least I wasn't like embarrassed to show you guys. Now, the parts where I felt like it had too much of the brown, I just went right back over it very lightly with a little bit of the color beadboard. And I just thought, Kathy, leave it alone. Stop this insanity and just leave it alone, honey. And I had to come to a place where I could just sit back and say, okay, this is good enough. We don't always knock it out of the park, but I'm proud with what I finally accomplished. And I hope you like it too. And if you guys stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to thank you so much for coming and spending your time with me and watching me craft today. I love every single one of y'all, and I am so proud of this channel and how much we're growing and at the rate that we're growing. Don't forget that my videos are every Monday and Thursday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I would love to have you to be part of this channel. And also, if you did enjoy this content, give me a big thumbs up because it really helps me. I love y'all. And finally, our pool liner is getting put in, but I wanted to show you guys what a naked pool looks like before the liner goes in. Not a lot of people get to see the beauty of it. <laughs> That's definitely a joke, by the way. This is an old Ringer wash machine. It's a Maytag that we got from my friend next. Uh, he's actually a really good friend of ours. It's our neighbor. It was his mama's. It's go it's went through the rinse cycle already. I'll show you how they wash, but you older people already know. Well, not rinse cycle, but we rinsed it. We poured the water from the hose in there, rinsed it. And that's how it goes out the bottom right there how your water goes out and now we're wringing them out but this thing really i mean it really does ring these look at i mean that's run that's flat wrung out right there <laughs> and they smell good just i mean yeah That's the lid over there. Right there's the lid. On top of the pool saw. Waiting on our liner so we can swap over to salt water. But yeah, there right. she blows. Yeah. Out here washing clothes at 9.30 at night on a Tuesday. In Shawnee yeah. Daisy, Tennessee. And I'm sorry, but this was too cute not to show you guys. That's my grandbaby up on the top corner up there that the teacher's talking to because <laughs> he kept doing hand signs at us. And at first we thought that he was pointing at us like, oh yeah, baby, I got it going on. But we think that he's shooting spider webs like Spider-Man sticks his hand out like that and he shoots webs. So we're pretty sure that that's what he was doing the whole time. But he was making all these little facial gestures and stuff at his little graduation. And this was just too cute. I'm sorry. Of course, I'm partial. That's my grandbaby. But I think he is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I love it.
I mean, they bring so much joy to your life. It's like, how can you not get a kick out of them, you know? If you enjoy this content, I would love for you to go back and watch some of my other videos. And I will see you guys on Monday, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. I love y'all.